really at an interesting point for the Gold Coast Suns. We talked about it a little bit last week. They lost again yep, yesterday. They, they got the, the Cats coming through town this week. They're facing a none and three. It made worse, to be fair, by the performance of the three uh, regenerated coaches, Clarkson, Ross Lyon and Brad Scott, who are 2-0. and So they're 6-0. And we're all ostensibly available to the Sun. Certainly, we know Clarkson wanted to go there. We think Ross would have gone. And I suspect Brad Scott's arm was twistable. And they backed in due. That record's starting to get heavy on him, 27 points. In fact, it's beyond getting heavy. It's, it's probably at flash point now. And would they be having buyer's remorse yet? Like, they haven't... Demo- they'd be, they'd they be very different- worried. And, and they were winnable games. Um, the AFL, you know, we, we've spoken many times on this show about their frustration over the years with GWS and their private criticisms of Leon Cameron. I think that they're really disappointed in the direction of the Suns this year. And there's criticism, rightly or wrongly, for the CEO, Mark Evans, who re-signed Stuart Jew off the back of a few wins. And from str- the players, in fairness, strongly mm. supported Stuart Jew and wanted him to stay. But it's unfathomable to me, Matthew, that Alistair Clarkson... I mean, you, he really wanted to go to the Gold Coast and that deal was nearly done. Certainly verbally. Brad Scott, I quite agree, would probably have strongly considered it. Don't know about Ross Lyon and don't know how close that ever got, but it is extraordinary that they stuck with Stuart Dew and this has happened. That's last year petered out and this year looks like it's petering out too. Lordy, I know you were there yesterday. It was even at at three-quarter time. Dead even with Essendon, a team that they think they should be competing with. And I was waiting for someone to stand up in the last quarter to do a Joel Selwood, to do a Matthew Lloyd back in the day or a Luke Hodge. And this is what they delivered, the stats-wise, in the last quarter. Minus 10, all all red, including they conceded 20 inside 50s and 11 scoring shots. So besides Rao and Miller and Wits, who is going to be the players to stand up and lead this footy club? Yeah, they do rely on, on, on... I think Miller's the player that is more... That a club relies on more than any other player in the competition with what he has to do for them and generate and then to try and sit on him who's going to uh, jump off the back of Took Miller. So it's a real issue for them. They're beaten by a side that they should be more advanced in and even Brad Scott talking after the game, even he's trying to hold down expectation. I don't want to dampen their excitement. I mean, I, I want them to be encouraged but also to, to have an eye on, on what's coming through. For us every game is a hard game and there are no no easy games. Um, but we want our fans to, to be excited, just just also understanding that it is going to take us some time. Yeah, pretty considered comments and we can often be hard on coaches and we are on Monday nights, but I thought he had a great week and, and I thought he had a great week for a number of reasons. Firstly, the decision to not play Jake Stringer when he was fit to play. Massive tick. Played in the VFL, got through three quarters. They win the game. Really good decision. I'd love to see Stringer spend at least one, maybe two more weeks in the VFL. Uh, the decision to put McGrath half back was an obvious one that we'd all been seeing, but he's made that call and his performance was terrific yesterday. Langford forward. How are we going to match- manufacture this forward line with White, Wright and Stringer out? Five goals there. Um, Dylan Shiel back on ball. And what an impact he has made since going inside again. 27, two goals, seven clearances. And then Lordo to sub Dyson Heppel out was the right call at the right time. Yeah, it was a big call, a brave call, uh, considering what he's meant for the club. And you can see the shock here. That, that hurts a proud player's um, uh, ego there, being told by whoever that was. Yeah, that he's the was it unusual not to get told by one of the coaches? Like, that's yeah. clearly being... A built. surprise. Yeah, that, yeah, that's a shock to him, and it's one of the ground yeah. stuff. He let Brett off, OK? So, uh, yeah, you just yep. love to hear Brad Scott's explanation of that weather. Next yep. time around, that should come from the coach. But and the just, irony, yeah. the Suns were the ones that tried to lure him away from the Bombers, and he subbed out yeah. for a quarter. But Hutch, they were 0-3 last year, the Bombers. So just to be 2-0, yep. it's just a uh, far Which better Which you've position. been crying out for years. Because you often yeah, said they start the they season start poorly. They start the season poorly, then they galvanise for a bit under a lot of pressure, but this is much, much better. And it gives him the mantra to make some, or at least be allowed, some off-field changes that need to be made, which we talked about yep. last week.